joyful and triumphant. O oh, come ye, O oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Sing choirs of angels. Sing Exaltation, sing all ye citizens of heaven afar. Glory to God, glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come. Let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. What's up, guys? Welcome to our last week of 2020 at, at XR Students. We're going to be kicking it off online with some worship and then Jack Scott and Austin Message Stores. And then don't forget, make sure you jump into your Zoom small group tonight because we've got a Zoom digital escape room for you. I encourage you to be on your laptop doing it. Uh, you're going to be working together as a team and the winning team, we're going to get Amazon gift cards for each member of the winning team. So make sure you jump in. You can invite some friends still, share out the link. You're not going to want to miss this. It's going to be awesome. But let's kick it off with some worship. Very gentle, may let nothing you dismay. Remember, Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort. has come for us this Jesus is the hope for all mankind he has come for us this Messiah born to give us life from God our heavenly Father Certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. Now that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. He has come for us this Jesus. He's the hope. For all mankind, Jesus come for us, this Messiah, born to give us life. All the angels sing, 
Uh, hey everybody, uh, welcome. Today we are finishing up our I Am series. We've been going through the Gospel of John and talking about these I Am statements that Jesus made uh, while he was here on earth. And today is our last day, and we are going to be looking at John chapter 15, uh, starting in verse 1. So um, this is near Jesus' end uh, of his time here on the earth, and he's basically just preparing his disciples for um, what they're going to be doing after he's gone. Uh, so here it is. Uh, John 15, 1 through 11. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, but every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the, wor because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that, the, and that your joy may be complete. So this I am statement of, of Jesus, I believe, is the most important one for us to understand. Because Jesus doesn't just tell us who he is. He tells us who we are. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Talking to his disciples, talking to us. We are the branches. Now, Jesus understands that his time here on the earth is coming to an end. The cross is right around the corner. Uh, it's time for him to basically rise up and be with the Father. And so he's preparing his disciples for this. And so with Jesus revealing to who he is and who we are, it gives us an idea of what we need to do moving forward. So as branches, what do we need to do? Well, branches bear fruit. And so what does it mean to bear fruit? What is it that Jesus is expecting of his disciples and of us? People often want proof of who Jesus is. Uh, I mean, if, if you're not a follower of, of, of God, you might have heard your friends say, you know, I just don't know the proof. Uh, I'm not sure it's there. And this was evident in the Bible, too. Take a look at uh, Matthew 16, verses 1 through 4. The Pharisees and Sadducees, so the religious leaders back then, uh, they came to Jesus and tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. And he replied, When evening comes, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, today it will be stormy, for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left them and went away. So Jesus is telling them uh, that the only sign they're going to receive is the sign of Jonah. And this is the sign of the resurrection and that he would be crucified and be dead and buried. On the third day, he will rise. Uh, just as Jonah on the third day was spit up from the big fish. You've all heard of Jonah and the whale. This is what Jesus is saying to them. He's saying that he is the sign. They're asking for a sign. He's saying, I am that sign. And on the third day, I'm going to rise. He is God on earth, and he'll be put to death on the cross, and he will rise so that we are forgiven from our sins. So when people ask me, you know, what proof is there that, that God exists, that Jesus actually was God, the, the, tr the, the proof is him, he himself, and more specifically, Jesus inside of us. Jesus through who we are and the actions that we take here on earth. Your life through Jesus is the absolute best proof that you can give to somebody for God's existence. Because Jesus has transformed you into who you are. You were an old sinful being and Jesus transforms you to be something new. Uh, every day we're being transformed through Jesus to be more like him. So how do we bear fruit? The, the first way that we bear fruit is we bear fruit by responding to the gospel, by believing it, by having faith in it, and by being a new person through it. And the gospel is 
basically, it's the good news of Jesus Christ. It's the life, the death, everything Jesus did here on earth. And it means good news. <clears throat> he came, he died in our place, he rose on the third day, and that means we don't have to live separate from God. That means we get to have a relationship with God. And that also means that we are the branches. He is the vine, and we are the branches. And that's not something we choose to do. It's something we get to do. God doesn't need us to do to, for his plan to work. He doesn't need us. He chooses to, you, to use us. We get to be a part of that. God is the Almighty. He doesn't need us. It is an honor that we are, are being used by him. And it doesn't end there. When, when I was younger, uh, my dad used to get up early on the weekends. He'd put on his jorts, you know, and his like knee-high socks, and he would like mow the grass at like 6 a.m. And I'd be like, what in, why are you getting up so early? It's a Saturday, like I'm trying to be in bed. And he's like, I, just, I love it. I love doing the yard work. I, I love being at Home Depot and, and Lowe's and just, I don't know, feeding the chickens and stuff. And I was like, whatever, you have it. And I was like, I'm, I'm never going to be like that. But you're never going to believe where I was yesterday morning. 6 a.m., Home Depot parking lot. And I'm like, we're putting up Christmas lights today. It's like, 6 a.m.? Old me would have never done that. But, man, if I don't just love the smell of a fresh-cut lawn these days, I don't know if it's because I'm a dad now or what, but, man, I have changed from... Back, to, back then when I didn't want to get up that early to do anything. And it's also true of my faith. Ten years ago, my faith looked nothing uh, like it looks now. I've changed. God has transformed me and molded me into who I am now. And hopefully, ten years from now, my faith will look drastically different again. I, every day, I want to take steps to be more like Jesus, to allow God to mold me into someone who is more like his son. And he's going to do the same thing for you guys. He's going to help you grow in your faith. You look different today than you did yesterday, than you did last week, than you did years ago. God is changing you and molding you. You just have to allow him to do that. You have to allow yourself to be molded into someone who looks more like Jesus. And so the second way that we bear fruit is we bear fruit by growing in our faith and becoming more like Jesus. By becoming more like Jesus, we can bear more fruit for God. So you may have heard of Galatians 5. This is the fruit of the Spirit. Um, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. A lot of us have probably heard of those before. These are the fruits of the Spirit. And so as we grow in our faith, as we allow ourselves to be transformed and be molded and to be more like Jesus, we should begin to see uh, some of these fruits you know, pop up in our lives. We should see love and patience and goodness. We should see these things. And others around us, they should be able to see them as well. Others around us should be like, man, why is that guy so so loving? Why is he so kind? Why, why is he so patient? Why doesn't he get angry and upset? Like, what is it about him that is, is, is this thing? And, and they should be seeing Jesus in you. They should be seeing your life transformed and different from others and they should be seeing Jesus inside of you. And so towards the end, uh, when Jesus is still talking to his disciples, he continues uh, in John and tells them this. He says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you, don't, if you do what I command, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I've made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. He's saying, be fruitful and love each other. He's handing over everything that he's been doing here on earth to his disciples so that they can hand it to others who will hand it to others who will eventually hand it to us so we can continue handing it off. So as Jesus is preparing his disciples, knowing what's right around the corner, knowing that he will be hanging on the cross very soon, uh, he is now calling his disciple friends. He's calling them friends. They are no longer 
just the people he's training. He, they are his friends. And he tells them and he tells us to bear fruit. And so the third way that we can bear fruit is we bear fruit by sharing our faith share, and sharing the gospel with others. We bear fruit by sharing our faith with others. Now, this is often the hardest part for us. It is not easy to go and be like, yeah, I love God and I want you to love him too. That's, it's kind of exposing ourselves to our friends sometimes and it feels a little awkward uh, to take what we know about Jesus and to share it with others. But that's what God's calling us to do. And the thing is, he knows it's hard. And, and so let's take a look back at what he said in verse five. He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Because apart from me, apart from Jesus, you can do nothing. Jesus knows that we need his help. He knows that without him, we can do absolutely nothing. And the goal of bearing fruit, the goal of, the goal of, of, of um, bearing fruit and just, man, what am I looking for here? <laughs> yeah, I know what I'm looking for. I just couldn't spit it out. And so the goal of bearing fruit and serving God is not for us to work really, really hard and try to please God and, and impress God in some sort of way that we're unsure of. The, the goal of bearing fruit is to trust God to do the work, to trust him to use you as a tool for his work. And that doesn't mean that we don't do anything. It means that we need to reach the people around us. It means that we need to love the people around us. It's, it's the fruit of the spirit, right? Love, peace. We need to be those things to the people around us, our friends, our peers, our family. And we need to invite them in to this community, to this space that we've built where it is uh, just a loving community where God can enter their lives and change them. God can save their lives. All you have to do is be that love and be that person that invites them in. From there, God can handle it. Because we can't change people. I can't change people. Dave can't change people. You can't change people. Only God, only Jesus can truly, truly change somebody. He chooses to use us as the method of change. He chooses to use us as that invite. And so that's all you have to do. And then God will handle the rest. So tonight, I am changes who I am because apart from him, apart from Jesus, I can do nothing. Let's pray. God, I pray that you would just help us to be bold um, when we're around our friends, our family, our peers, God, um, and just know that you are on our side. Because apart from you, God, we can do nothing. Apart from you, God, we are left to just sinless. We're left to just live a sinless life destined for hell. But God, you sent your son who died for us, God, so that we can be your friend, so that we can be a part of your plan, so that you can use us to reach more people, to reach our friends, to reach our family, and to reach our peers, God. I pray that you would just... Just give us the confidence to do that, to just go out there and know that we are just your tool, God. <clears throat> that we are just your tool. God, I thank you that you're able to use us in these ways. And I pray that you would just, through the rest of, of this season, through Christmas and through New Year's, just give us the opportunities to reach out to someone who maybe doesn't know who you are or, or, or needs a second chance in your kingdom, God. I thank you for the opportunities that you've given us to do those things. And I pray that you would just be with us in spirit and just provide the hope that we need the rest of this year, God. In your name I pray, amen. The God of Abraham, to the God of covenant, for faithful promises. You time and time again, you have proven you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness. Rising sun to 
to the setting same I will praise 